Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the different ways that you can adjust the color values, among other things, on all of your texture maps. Before iClone 7, if you wanted to modify the values of your texture maps, you would need to select your texture, then scroll down to the Adjust Texture section to play with the parameters such as brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation. If you had multiple texture maps on the same object, like our Easter Island statue here, the requirement to scroll up and down to switch maps and adjust parameters could be a bit troublesome, and could slow down your workflow significantly. Even with IBL maps in the visual section, you would need to scroll up and down to adjust the values you wanted. Thankfully with iClone 7 we now have a universal adjust color panel that can be used for all texture maps. You'll find the actual adjust color button underneath all of your texture maps in the material tab. Once you have it open, you can toggle between different texture maps without needing to scroll up and down your panel at all. You can even go over and select your IBL image from the visual section and use the same panel to adjust the parameters for that map as well. If we want to adjust the sky map separately, we can do so easily. This time I'm double right clicking on the texture map to open up the adjust color panel instead of clicking the actual button itself. You can also double right click on the texture map once the adjust color panel is already open to close it again. Now if I adjust the sharpness of the sky map, it will only affect the map itself and not the light emitting from the IBL. You can create a cool looking DOF effect this way. If we want to give the statue a look more like it's made of metallic iron, then we can quickly switch over to the metallic texture map and pump up the brightness to maximum levels to really add the appearance of a more metallic surface as opposed to a rough, rocky one. If you want to go back to default values, simply press reset. From there we can fool around with the color balance sliders as well. To make the statue appear as though it's made of a much more valuable material, gold. I'm going to reset all the values I modified, and now it's time to show how we can manipulate all the values in the adjust color panel to make a prop fit into its native environment. In this case, the statue belongs on Easter Island. I'll turn off the sky map and the HDR effects first, and then I'm going to go into the background settings and load in a nice warm image of Easter Island as our background. As I position it, you'll notice that it doesn't look like it belongs in this scene at all. The lighting is all off, and the textures look totally different from those of his brothers in the background. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off my scene rim light, and then use the forward slash key to rotate our key light, so that it's coming from the direction that the light seems to be coming from in our background. Then we can change the color of the light to a nice warm sunset orange, and increase the shadow darkness of that light as well since there will likely be more shadow contrast in an evening scene. I'll then boost up the multiplier of the light to brighten it up a bit as well. From there let's adjust the ambient color emitted from the IBL texture map, since it's much too cold for this warm sunset scene. If we boost up the saturation to maximum after that, you'll see that it looks a lot more like you would imagine the sun would look setting over Easter Island. Next I'll quickly click over to the roughness map and increase the brightness a bit, since this is supposed to be a very old and rugged statue. I can also touch up the base color values to make it a slight bit darker as well. Finally, let's take a look at a quick example of how you can use LUTs or LUTs to tweak the color values of your scene in a different way. We have a separate tutorial that goes into more depth on LUTs, but here we're just showing a quick example. You can find them in the effects folder under the stage tab. You'll have an embedded folder called LUTs, but I also have a visual enhancement folder that contains some optimized LUTs that are available for separate purchase from our website. I'm going to use this first one entitled Bleach Alternative, and you'll see that it acts almost like an Instagram filter and gives us a more uniform color scheme, bringing our prop and background together more. If you want to tweak this even further, you can go into the Post Effects section, where you'll find an Effect Contribution slider as well as your handy adjust color panel where we can further go in to tweak the values there to integrate our statue further into the scene. And that's about it for this quick video. The adjust color panel marks a small but clever and useful new piece of UI that will no doubt speed up your workflow and give you more power over visual tweaks in your scene.